God who is at work in us, both to will and to do, and you use the weapon and the tool of prayer to establish the program of God. Force of prayer. Please write it down. The force of prayer. Particularly, I want to teach you how to use prayer as a tool to birth and establish the purposes of God across a territory. Greater works for the saints, for any territory, is at the mercy of believers who have sustained spiritual intelligence to know how to use the tool and the weapon of prayer to both birth and sustain the program of God. Every program of God is birthed and managed by the prayer ministry. Men and women who do not know how to use prayer, you can know how to use prayer to get your needs. That is wonderful. You can know how to get pray to use prayers for personal things. But now this is beyond just personal needs. I'm talking about an apostolic order of prayer where you use prayer as a tool. You find out what God wants to do because it is God who is at work in us both to will and to do and you use the weapon and the tool of prayer to establish the program of God. The Bible says, if my people which are called by my name, listen, shall humble themselves, is that in your Bible? And pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. It says, then will I hear from heaven and then I will forgive their sin and heal not their bodies, heal their land. The healing of the land is God's desire, but it is at the mercy of certain people that people can come together corporately with understanding, knowing that this is what God wants to do in Abuja. Are we together? You see, the assignment of the prophetic, if and when done accurately, is to capture by the gift and the spirit of the prophetic, God's blueprint per season, and then to hand it over. That is the reason why the prophetic goes hand in glove with the ministry of intercession. Every true prophet in scripture was also an intercessor. You know why? Because they have the assignment to see and to establish in and through the place of prayer. Jesus would never have come until there is a prophetess, a prophetess called Anna. The Bible does not call her an intercessor. It calls her a prophetess. Yet we never see her prophesying. The only thing we see that she did was intercession. Yet the Bible says she was a prophetess. The real assignment of a prophet is beyond just prophesying to individuals. There is a place for that. The re in fact, let me tell you the truth. True prophets in scripture were not easily seen. Are we together? There were men who were men of the altar. They were always in hiding. It would take a lot for you to see men like Samuel. There were dates and times when Samuel would come out and you would see people running. Finally, that seer is about to come out. And if for any reason you collided with him on the way, even if it's your donkey, it must return home. Because these were men of the altar. I don't know how many people met Anna the prophetess in their life. There's no record, no known record. She was a woman who remained in the temple because she received by prophetic insight that salvation was to come to men and that she would not taste death until she saw the consolation of Israel. And her assignment was not just to say, wow, Maranatha. <clears throat> it was in the place of prayer. Can I tell you, please look up. As I'm saying this, that grace is going to be resting on people. That grace to pray. Listen, there is a dimension of prayer where you are not the one leading yourself again. Your assignment is to get there. You are carried by the Spirit of God. It is at that realm. You are not praying at the frequency of your will again. God takes you over and you are speaking things that you do not even understand. You don't have a prayer point. Your passion is the only ingredient needed in that place of prayer. Hallelujah. This is beyond the realm of just intercession. This is like a woman in labor. As soon as Zion travails, she shall put forth. There is no birthing without traveling. Listen, 
there are many of you God can allocate territories to you as a project and say Abuja should not fail under your watch. It's not by going on social media or going and, and gathering people. It's by staying in the secret place, knowing that this is your mandate, that God has given you a project. God can allocate five businessmen and say these men are kingdom financiers. That is your project. Your assignment is to pray the will of God to come to pass in their lives. Many pray, but very few understand the dimensions of prayer. Africa is a praying continent. And sadly, the more we pray, the more the forces of darkness seem to go unhindered. Because for many, prayer is just religiosity to ease the guilt of feeling less spiritual. That is not the assignment of prayer. Show me any move of God that did not happen at the instance of prayer. And I can tell you that was not a move of God indeed. We pray for hours in Africa and it carries very little power. Because number one, our motif and motivation is corrupted. And number two, the entire span of the prayer largely is driven by self. Hallelujah. So God comes to you and says, I want to restore the healing anointing in Africa like it was in the 50s the 60s and don't just sit down and say well there are joshua selmans and there are men of god it will never come to pass when you receive that for god to trust you with that revelation your next assignment is to know that you must bear certain things listen to me i can tell you sincerely the reason why many people never see what god told them is because they do not know that between the realm of the spirit and the physical realm there is a womb. The womb incubates spiritual things and stays there. When a baby is nine months and a woman cannot give birth, I'm not a medical doctor, but there are times because of excessive delay, you can induce the person. And if it does not happen by normal delivery, there's something called CS. By any means, that baby must come out when it's time. But there are many people who do not know how to birth prophecy. There are things that were supposed to happen to your region, your family since 2018. But men who can push through in the place of prayer, God keeps reminding you, you wake up with dreams not knowing what they mean. The dreams are not just God giving you a movie to watch. He's informing you, I need partnership. It's the spirit and the bride that says come. It's the spirit and the bride that says come. Men of prayer with understanding are also men of power in their generation. I repeat. Men of prayer with understanding are men of power with their ninja generation. Koinonia, hear me. Please listen. Don't you think that all it takes to put a service like this is just excellent media, excellent voices, a wonderful pulpit, nicely dressed ministers? No, sir. You try it and see if you will survive one month. There are forces that are determined to fight the purposes of God. And there are men and women anointed. And bless everyone who is part of this ministry. Who is committed to the ministry of prayer. Praying the will of God every week, every month, every time. When you ever see anything succeed in the earth realm. To God's standard and satisfaction. Prayer ushered the way for that move. Ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. We must be men of prayer, but our prayer must be, be beyond the need to just feel spiritual. There are many people today who pray not because they like prayer, who pray not because they believe it. They are just under pressure because we have created a narrative that if you don't pray, you are not spiritual. So most people carry it as a burdensome ritual, as a necessary luggage they must carry. The true spirit of prayer and supplication does not come by compulsion. It comes by revelation. There is something you need to know about the value of prayer as far as God's program is concerned. That knowledge is what empowers you to pray. Hallelujah. The force of prayer. Show me the mountain that has refused to move. I show you the mountain that prayer has not really hit it. When prayer comes, did your Bible not say the fervent and effect? There are many kinds of prayer in the Bible. There is praying amiss. 
energetic prayer but inconsistent with God's pattern and there is praying with understanding that produces power he says for as a prince thou hast had power with God you see God gave you the prayer language because of the obvious limitations that we have that the Bible has come to acknowledge that we do not know what to pray for as we ought to but he says the spirit helpeth. to help is not to take over the responsibility of your life can I tell you ladies and gentlemen when you want to change nations you start by changing your Jerusalem don't leave your Jerusalem dying and you are trying to change Samaria when your family has not experienced the life and the grace and the power of God even if you don't know what to do the first assignment is to know that there are things that God desires he's spoken great things about his Zion but it must happen at the instance of prayer can I tell you sincerely when God find people whose motives have been purified whose prayer is not just a way of easing guilt of spirituality but people who want to be part of his program you will see God move in unusual dimensions the strength of darkness is not because darkness is strong the strength of darkness is because the saints are lazy the saints are lazy plus Jesus minus Satan amen laziness spiritually the Bible says if you sow to the flesh you will reap of the flesh corruption you want to become a great man of God you gather all the gallons of anointing oil you can get I'm not being sarcastic without a rich prayer ministry there are many things is until the day God reveals to you or when you are done with your time on earth God will tell you this should have happened if you prayed this should have happened if you prayed I had planned that between January and March there was a door in the spirit I planned to open for your ministry but there were people who were lazy and could not pray and because of that spiritual slumber the Bible says where well, men slept an enemy came an enemy does not come when you are awake while men slept while men slept there are altars that seem to not answer to many families is because they have not found people that can pray if any of you shall touch shall ask anything how did he put it now if any of you shall agree as touching anything as touching anything you learn to pray as as a habit not an emergency response system that is important but you must go beyond that father my job is being threatened i can't agree that's wonderful but you must learn to pray there are, if you are a real man of prayer you will know you are a man of prayer because in many instances you will not have a prayer point you will allow him to be the lord of hosts in your prayer life you don't just go with a list and say father thank you you are the lion of the tribe of judah the rose of sharon the beginning and the end and you quickly pass with those preambles lord i'm here again please this issue i've been talking is it that you will keep watching me like this and many people talk and at the end of it they say amen just because you said amen did not mean you prayed and just because you stayed long there did not mean you prayed there is something called effectual and fervent prayer I have told you effectual means it must be word compliant fervent means your heart must be involved prayer that is word compliant and prayer that your all is invested into it the Bible says it produces power it avails much I can tell you sincerely and I stand before God and before his people over 85 to perhaps 90 percent of my prayer it's not for myself and it's not a habit I did I just started now no let your program come oh God where are the people you are raising in this season I don't know them but you know them mine is to agree with the spirit of grace Lord visit them give them an encounter and while you are praying I can tell you the Bible may not tell us but Saul did not just meet with Jesus just like that I am sure there was somebody who received the burden of that prayer and he said I may not know who I'm praying for but Lord that Pharisee that needs to encounter you let that person encounter you and while Paul was breathing threats on his way to Damascus that light came and hit him down can I tell you God moves when men pray 
God moves when men pray. He does not just hear. He hears when men cry. But he moves when men pray. God moves when men pray. God moves when men pray. Hallelujah. The force of prayer. You want to survive the days that are coming? You want to be part of God's prophetic program? You want to step into that realm of greater works? You must learn to pray. You must learn to pray. You must learn to pray. Pray the will of God. Pray the purposes of God. First in your life and then across every territory. Can I tell you? Praying, especially in the spirit, solves many problems at once. While you are praying with your mind, focus on the program of God. Edification is also happening in your spirit, man. Look at this. Let me tell you what prayer does to an individual as far as edification is concerned. Have you tried to turn the knob of a tap, a tap that runs with water, and just open it a little and you see it dripping down? That is not all the water that can come, but that is the only allowance the tap has provided. You try to fill a bucket with a drop of water coming drop by drop and you can remain there. Prayer enlarges and it expands your capacity that that which is locked up in your spirit man can find visible expression. You have the eyes to see already. You have the ears to hear already, but it is being trapped between your spirit and this realm. There is a layer that only prayer can tear open. You are prayerless and you just lay hands on people and say the Bible said they shall lay hands on the sick. You will be disappointed. Ladies and gentlemen, you hear testimonies here that people say, oh, before August 25th, I don't mean to be arrogant, but you try it. Make a decree like that. Human beings are not fools. There are things that is, this is not a bracatabra. I am Gabriel who standeth in the presence of God. That is what Gabriel told Zechariah. When Zechariah doubted his statement, he said, Me, I am Gabriel. I'm coming before the presence of God. Do you know the implication? Will I carry this falsehood before the presence of God? I am Gabriel that stands in the presence of God. A man who can stand in the presence of God can change the climate of nations and territories. It is my prayer that we will accent realms in prayer where we can make one prophetic decree by the Spirit and literally shift the climate of nations. Africa is in a prophetic season right now and I can tell you that all that is happening across our continent from a standpoint of God's program is a product of of many people investments of prayers of many years did the bible not say the prayers of the saints are contained in vials in heaven don't you ever think any genuine prayer you made is a waste god may look slow but your heaven is being filled with rain by the time the rain the bible says and if the cloud be full of rain mama you have been praying for your son for 20 years you'll be patient maybe this is the final year don't give up in prayer prayer requires stamina did you hear what I said prayer requires stamina when you do not see an answer be like Elijah pray again pray again pray again fast again decree again speak again apostle I prayed for power nothing came go back again and pray go back again and decree go back again stand in that presence one day you would not have planned it. You would just go to the place of prayer as usual. Whereas that will be the day the mantle of your destiny finally arrives. Hallelujah. When a plane leaves, say Lagos to Abuja. For over 50 minutes you would not see the plane. Until the last two or three minutes. Perhaps maybe the last four minutes thereabout. That's when you will see the plane. It will come visibly. But it does not mean it was not moving. From the very time... That they told you the plane had left it truly left but just because it's somewhere in the cloud are we together now and those who are coming to pick their loved ones they wait in expectation sometimes because of weather condition there can be delays 
Are we together? Sometimes instructions are given to the pilots to hang on. Maybe there's a presidential jet about to land and they suspend them for a while. So you may see a little delay for five, maybe 10, maybe 15 minutes, but the plane is still landing. And those who wait there wait with expectation. Provided it lifted, it will not remain in the air. There are many of you from the very first day you went to pray, certain things had left heaven. Are we together now? You pray. You don't pray one day and get the result of 10 years. You are joking. Prayer is an investment. Are we together now? Yes. I'm saying this because if you want to see greater works, ladies and gentlemen, I can tell you there is a responsibility component to it. Impartations are wonderful, but our generation is getting drunk with impartation and is driving them away from the responsibility of building a personal altar of prayer. I have taught you about altars, that an altar is a system of authorization. You get up and you see that you were in a dream healing people revealing the glory of God don't just write it down and say a powerful dream it will never come to pass until you get to pray apostle I went to bed oh, and I saw people giving me money that is a possibility that God wants to make happen but without birthing it in the place of prayer no so you go to pray everything God shows me that is consistent with his will my next responsibility is to agree with him like Mary be it unto me according to your word then the part two of it is not to irresponsibly sit down and say after all apostle is praying for me no that is not an effective Christian way I will pray for you as a responsibility but you must obtain grace and go down on your knees and shut your door and say enough is enough Lord you showed me this you said by now my family should have risen I may not know what direction to go but I begin to pray and you are there repeat it again the next day repeat it the next day repeat it the next day you hear that everybody is getting sick in your family don't sit down and say I know one day go better hold on to the horns of the altar and pray do you believe what I'm teaching you? The spirit of death comes to open the door of your house and you fold your arms. I've been sensing that there is a spirit of death in this house. That discernment is a waste if you don't drive it in the place of prayer. Are we together? There are many believers when things happen to you and people around you, you say, but I saw it. What did you do about it? I saw it too. I saw this thing. The realm of the spirit was telling you that there is something about to happen in the earth realm. You can allow or disallow and carelessness and laziness made you to just ignore until evil happened. Make up your mind ladies and gentlemen. Man of God, don't allow the devil come and destroy your ministry. I just sense that something is wrong. It looks like there is an attack around my church. What are you doing about it? You are just folding your arms. You don't know how determined Satan is when believers become lazy. 30 days without prayer, with understanding, gave him room. He wanted 30 days to wreak havoc over Babylon. Hallelujah. The only thing worse than praying I miss is not being prayerful at all. It's even better to pray and make the mistake God can correct you. Ladies and gentlemen, please do not lie to yourself and say, me, I'm not a prayer warrior. There's nothing called the gift of prayer in the Bible. Go and read it. Among the gift of the Spirit, prayer is not there. If you ever think prayer is convenient, you lie to yourself. Prayer is like taking your bath. Prayer is like eating. There are times you are lazy and you almost don't want to smell water, but you know that you need it for your health. And sometimes you have to drag yourself in the morning. Be sleepy while you are praying. You just start praying and a miracle happens. But one thing I can tell you about prayer is prayer can become a habit empowered by the spirit of grace and supplication. Are we learning? You want to see the glory of God revealed? 
you must learn to pray not just as a group so that people will see you praying and say this man is powerful Hannah was not interested in all of that corporate prayer is powerful but corporate prayer is what you bring from your secret place prayer is one area you cannot lie about if you are not you can be hypocritic about other things but not prayer because the kind of energy that you bring in the open must be built in the secret you can't fake that one I can tell you hallelujah and you see let me tell you something about being prayerful there is a presence and power that accompanies a life of consistent prayer such that you obtain grace you can stand before a prayerless person and discern weakness in the spirit you can know that this person is sincere but you can discern powerlessness and weakness that if the devil should strike at this person he's gone except immune by the ministry of intercessors he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray. Koinonia, hear me. Just believing somebody is praying for you alone is good but not all profitable. Every family must become a family of prayer. Everybody must become a person of prayer. Wake up in the night. Discipline yourself. You may not have the grace to pray 10 hours, 5 hours. You will not even have the time to do that every day. Let me tell you the truth. But one thing you can do is you can build a system of consistency around your life. It's better for me to spend two hours praying every night and recreate my destiny than to sleep for that two hours and suffer for 30 years. It's a foolish bargain to allow slumber of one or two hours. Please don't feel sad. I'm not being hard on you without a reason. I'm just challenging and stretching you.